Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope that you're all having a really fantastic day thus far. And so if you're in the Eastern Caribbean, you're probably experiencing some inclement weather conditions, maybe some overcast skies, maybe some rainfall. And so I'm going to be taking you guys through that increase in the region. And so I will also be taking a look at that potential system off the southeastern coast of the U.S. as we head to the latter part of this week. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. All right, and so starting out, uh, returning to this infrared satellite imagery here, we can see that uh, some activity is pretty prevalent in sections of the Caribbean, particularly the Eastern Caribbean. We also see lots of showers and thunderstorms over in the Eastern Pacific. And of course, uh, to the north of the Eastern Caribbean, uh, we also see all of that activity in association with that low pressure area. And uh, there are the two tropical waves out there in the Atlantic, not a whole lot uh, happening happening at the moment so uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the area and here we can see all of this uh, convective activity across sections of the basin so firstly looking up into the uh, vicinity just north of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico there we can see lots of showers and thunderstorms developing uh, this morning and so this is likely going to be inducing some activity across these areas likely some rainfall throughout today and of course that thunderstorm storm activity as well and of course going to the east there we have that flow of activity coming from what was uh, pretty much prevalent across sections of the uh, northwestern part of South America now making its way to the east bringing some activity with it so fortunately for you guys after a long time without any consistent rainfall this could provide it however some of the northern islands might not experience as much rain and that would include areas such as in Willa, St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, and possibly even Antigua and Barbuda as well. Not to say that you guys won't receive any rainfall at all, but it's just that uh, the amount that you guys receive will likely be less than uh, the rest of the region going southward. And so for other areas such as Venezuela, of course, that activity is affecting the area, also going into sections of Guyana. But of course, uh, we see some convective activity, likely in association with the intertropical convergence zone, bringing some uh, rainfall to parts of northern Suriname and French Guiana but for the western Caribbean things are going to be pretty dry for the most part as we head throughout today so let us go ahead and take a look at what the different models have to show in terms of the rainfall expected starting out with the euro so of course as this map becomes more colorful uh, the rainfall total is higher and this is as we're going to be heading throughout today and so we can see here that the model is expecting that the most rainfall in the Caribbean region will be of course in the vicinity of uh, Hispaniola as well as Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as well as going down to mainly the Windward Islands. So we're seeing that most of the Leeward Islands are uh, inclusive of Martinique uh, and St. Vincent as well won't receive as much rainfall but uh, definitely not that you guys won't receive any but just not as much compared to other areas such as the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad, Tobago uh, and maybe even go into Barbados but of course Northern South America America is expected to receive substantial rainfall as we progress throughout today and I'll go into the Western Caribbean going to Jamaica we're seeing that some rainfall activity is possible uh, the Dior is not expecting a whole lot of rainfall and uh, go into Cuba the Cayman Islands and even parts of Central America we see that even less rainfall anticipated going to GFS uh, it is showing something pretty much similar just showing those uh, some higher totals down in sections of Suriname and uh, even go into sections of Venezuela as well but the same general general uh, expectation here and then finally for the icon same thing again it is showing less rainfall for Jamaica though but uh, for the most part we have these models being consistent about that activity in the east so that is the likely outcome as we're going to be progressing throughout today and of course guys in the event of any heavy rainfall please take all necessary precautions and do not take any unnecessary risks.
And so guys, finally, we want to go ahead and talk about potential development of the southeastern coast of the U.S. So models have been pretty consistent about this, and it is unlikely that the first low pressure area, uh, that first disturbance will actually develop into something. Uh, the chance remains at 10% this morning, and uh, it is being battled by shear as well as some drier conditions. So it is unlikely that we will see any uh, development of that system over the next couple of days. But of the southeastern U.S., as I said, models have been very consistent about something developing. So we're going to be taking a look at what they are showing. So we're going to be starting out with the icon. And of course, if you're not familiar with this map, the black lines are isobars, which are imaginary lines that join areas of equal pressure. And of course, uh, when we see that the value is at least 1013 millibars or less than that, that is a low pressure system that can sometimes be a tropical cyclone, especially when we see those circular isobars. Bars. And of course, those colors, those greens, yellows, reds, they indicate the precipitation rate. So looking at what the icon is expecting, there we have the forecast time. Going to Thursday and Friday, it is definitely showing the development of that low pressure area of the southeastern coast of the U.S. And so I'm going to be taking you guys to what could fuel this thing very shortly. Moving on to the Canadian model, that model is expecting that we're going to be seeing development a bit later, uh, going to next Sunday and Monday and not actually showing the system immediately making its way inland either. Heading to the Euro model, we can see that uh, going to the end of this week, going to Thursday and Friday, we have that low pressure area loitering off the southeastern coast, eventually making its way up to the north and moving into uh, North Carolina and Virginia. And then finally, we have the GFS pretty consistent about it, showing something very much similar to, uh, to the Euro show, but showing that uh, it will be at a later time around Sunday when the system might make its way inland. So here we have all these models being very consistent about us uh, seeing something. And of course, if we manage to get a subtropical or tropical cyclone, it will acquire the name Arlene uh, since that is the first name to be used this hurricane season. And so uh, in terms of what is going to be fueling it, here we are looking at the sea surface temperature map and uh, notice that we have some of those colors that narrow streak of warm waters now that is the Gulf Stream now it is basically an ocean current that carries warm water from the Gulf of Mexico into the Atlantic and so uh, if the system is going to be making its way off the coast and loitering within this region it is likely going to be getting some fuel from the Gulf Stream and that could aid in the development of showers and thunderstorms within the system so that is what is expected guys Nothing new is marked on the National Hurricane Center's seven-day outlook map as of right now, but I'm expecting that uh, we might see an area being highlighted maybe sooner rather than later. However, I will be keeping you guys updated as time progresses. And that is pretty much it for this update video. And so I hope that you found it to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be with the wise.